This was a star running back for seven seasons, winning two consecutive Super Bowls with the Denver Broncos. He said the incident, which happened in front of his wife, Tomiko, and children, has left him humiliated, powerless, and angry. He and his wife, Tomiko, join us live right now here in the studio. Damn, T. Uh, Terrell, Terrell Davis. All right, Terrell. Terrell Davis, that's the perks of being a Hall of Fame running back right there, man. Yeah, she a cutie, too, boy. Thank you, yeah, no, thank, thank you for having us here. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. this. We'd, we'd much rather not be here. I know. You know, know. talking about this um, under these circumstances, but it's necessary, right? We get, We have to come here. Yeah, I'm a black person and I had a bad experience, so I got to go on Good Morning America and shit on the whole country. Press one. This shit is annoying, man. You had a bad experience, nigga. Fuck. This wife, Tomiko, join us live right now here in the studio. Thank yeah, you both. No, thank, thank you for having us here. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. this. We'd, we'd much rather not be here. I know. You know, talking about this um, under these circumstances, but it's necessary, right? We get, we have to come here. Our kids are in uh, California on vacation, and we were enjoying that, and they're wondering why mom and dad mm. are not there with them now. But you want to be the voice for the voiceless. Yeah. So let's yeah. take us for people. Damn, you victimized even more, man. Like, damn. This is crazy. You had to go on Good Morning America to talk about getting taken off a plane, man, which victimized your children, man. You just a victim all the way around, man. People who are not familiar with the story. You're on a flight. Yeah. Uh, beverage service starts. Yeah. Tell us what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's an ordinary flight. They have the beverage service that starts. And I'm in uh, row 11, and I'm in the aisle. My oldest son is right next to me in the middle seat. My youngest son is in the window seat. My wife is across the aisle. And uh, my wife and daughter across the aisle in one row back. Mm -hmm. And so it's a typical flight, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. Beverage service starts and the gentleman pulls up and I'm reading a magazine. My kids are playing with their iPads. So I heard him ask, like, what do you want? Like, beverage, what do you want? Mm -hmm. um, and they were busy playing with the iPad, so they didn't respond. And I remember the tone got a little bit more aggressive. And I was like, I was like man, I was kind of, you know, kind of rude from to ask my kids like that. So they got startled. They ordered their drinks, and I remember this. He puts the drinks down on the tray, but with force. Like, you could, I mean, just kind of slam them down. They say, thank you. He doesn't say anything. So I was like, all right, whatever. So he asked me my Nah, you was pissed off. <laughs> you ain't say, all right, whatever. I don't want to hear that. If that's what happened, if that's truly what happened, he seemed like he's telling the truth about that part, too. If that's what happened, you were pissed off, my G. You weren't like, all right, whatever. No way. He doesn't say anything. So I was like, all right, whatever. So he asked me my order. I give him my order again, kind of slams the, the drink down. And again, I'm thinking, well, what is going on with this guy? But whatever. As he gives me my, my drink, he starts to move the cart. Uh, and my son says, excuse me, my have some ice. And he obviously didn't hear my son ask for ice. So he moved the cart probably past my seat and so my hand was up like, excuse me. And then I finally said, excuse me, can I get some ice? Tap, I just tap, tapped him on the shoulder. He swings his arm back and said, don't hit me. And I'm like, dude, I didn't, I didn't hit you. And then he, uh, he, he rushes up to the front of the plane, he leaves the cart right there. And the gentleman in front of me turns around and says, I saw everything. I saw that. Like, like why did you, you know, you didn't hit him. I'm like, of course I didn't hit him. So as I'm sitting there on the plane, it was bizarre because he's up there for a couple of minutes and um, again, I was like, whatever. So I started reading the magazine. So you don't think anything of it? Nothing no. of it. Yeah. He comes back. He puts the cup of ice on my son's tray. He then takes the cart and takes it back up to, you know, to, the, fir to first class. And about three minutes later, um, another flight attendant takes over. She brings the cart down, starts servicing the area, and that's it. Mm -hmm. but then I, don't, I don't see him for the rest of the flight. You don't see him for the rest of rest the flight? Rest of the flight. But what did you see when you landed? What did you hear and see once the plane Oh, that's landed? a different story. Though. I mean, when we landed, they told everybody to remain in their seats because for whatever reason. And I thought it was a medical emergency. I fly a lot, so I, I've seen that before, where they say, stay in your seat, someone they need to tend to. Um, and so I've seen that before. So again, I'm just reading a magazine, and four or five minutes pass, and then I'm, my head is down, and I can hear like the walkie-talkies. I hear a lot of the gear and wrestling of like law. You, you can hear when they come on, 
and everybody you can kind of hear like the <laughs> the, the, the alls of like you can hear people the reaction the reactions to them coming on yeah. we As, say they coming on. who's coming on the fbi, FBI. The, 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 Big FBI letters on yeah. the jackets. Big as they like. Can't miss it. Yeah. Okay. FBI, I believe it was Orange County Sheriff Department. Uh, guys with green. I, I I didn't know who they were at the time, but okay. you can tell it was it was uh, law enforcement. Law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Without any, what happened? Without explaining to me why they were doing it, they walk up to me and the guy just he whispers in my ear. He says, "Don't fight it," and he puts cuffs on me. While he's still. While seated. I'm sitting down. With everybody still on the plane. Everyone Everybody's on the plane. the plane. He never introduced, you know, acknowledged, or confirmed that it was Terrell. Or say, he hey, here's why. Here's what here's, here's what happened. Here's why we're doing this. Or Nothing. can yeah. I ask what happened? He just walked straight up to him and placed hands. And what was it like for you to make it a see your... Well, the, the, they do that so that they can prevent a scene. Because if they start debating and negotiating with you and shit... Then it's a scene. So they just come, get the cuffs on you, and get you up out of there. And then they, you can debate and argue and fuss off the plane. That's how they do it. Ain't that, is that right, um, Mr.? Yeah, for the, I mean, for the most, for the most part, yeah. They don't want to, they don't want a big scene on the plane. Yeah, they don't want a scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they ain't got time to come. Hey, are you so and so? Here's what you did at at ten to ten ten. Um, uh, when the when the police car came back here, you did. That's no, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you didn't. Now put your cuffs on. Like, nah, it ain't. That's uh, nah. Or, or, they, or they'll ask you. Or they'll ask you. Could you come with us, please? A lot of times they they won't put the cuffs on you. They'll just ask you yeah. if you could come with us, please. Yeah, and, and and yeah, exactly. They will, they will do that. And 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 his account of it, he was a perfect gentleman. This guy's being rude to him and his kids, and he was just perfectly never reacted, never responded. I don't believe that, man. And and listen, I don't blame him if he was if the guy was truly rude to him for being, you know, giving him attitude back. But, man, you get a lot of listen. You get a. You get a lot of them on the plane, though, and I'm not going to say, you know, that they're, they're part of the LGBT XYZ yeah. AI community, and you know they have those yeah. little attitudes, and they just hey, whatever. Hey, hey, hey. You know, you get that often. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've noticed that. Yeah, they 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 they're, they're overrepresented in that field, man. Your husband in handcuffs. <laughs> Jeez. I thought it was a joke because what else could it be? Um, and I saw the, the agents come on. So of course it caught my attention like everyone else. And they just walked straight up to Terrell and just play. And so I jumped out of my seat and I said, wait a minute, like what's going on? And I hopped over the woman next to me and I went to, and I was kind of like to Terrell, are you joking? Like, is this a practical, no. is this a prank? Like, and he just, he just said quietly, no, it's not. And I'm looking at, I'm looking yeah. at my sons who are sitting right next to him, watching their dad being handcuffed. And what could we do? And I'm asking them, what is going on? Like, why are you doing this? Why? And they pick them, they, you know, pick to have him stand up and pull him out. So I go after him and he's telling me to stop. And then I'm standing there. The kids are still sitting in their seat. Everyone's it was staring it was at us. It was just, it and was the chaos. children are ages nine to 13? 13. Our sons are 13 and 11. Yeah. Our daughter is nine. Mm -hmm. No one helped me. Yeah. No, they came back. They asked for a jacket to drape over Terrell's wrist. I said, can we get off the plane? So I yelled to the kids, let's go. I grabbed Terrell's bag out of uh, the overhead where do we go? Like, what do we do? You know, I want to go with him. I want to, no one, I mean, we were just left to fend for ourselves on a flight with everyone staring at us. And United said this, they said, we removed the flight attendant from duty while they closely look into this matter and are reviewing their policies around incidents like this. They also say they have reached out to apologize. Um, have they, and what do you want to see, both of you want to see happen here? Well, number one, they, they have not reached out to me and apologized. They reached out to my attorney, but I have not heard from them directly. Um, 
And so that's that, that to me is is a problem. I and want them to take more that accountability. The apology was it's pretty generic. The media. Yeah, I, there was we've not had any communication no. from them directly. No. What is your reason for going public with this? Well, a number of reasons. Number one, I mean, it, to affect change. I mean, if, if, I, if I don't speak on this, um, lots of people, as a matter of fact, contacted me after this and they're sending me text messages saying that the same thing happened to them. And I can't sit there and knowing what happened to me and how I felt. I felt demoralized. I felt embarrassed, humiliated. I felt like I, my dignity was stripped from me right in front of my children and my family. Mm -hmm. And I want a United to, to be held accountable. Got to be held accountable for this. Well, I know that you've had some tough conversations mm -hmm. with your with your three children and I hope that they're doing well and appreciate yeah. you, your willingness to come forward and. All right, man. Terrell Davis, man. Powerless. Said 